<laughs> so said, not, only, not only are you enjoying the conversation, but your handbag is missing as well. So it's a real, it's a proper double pull. <laughs> That's not true, it's a very safe clean environment out here. They're upstairs, so they're safe. Yeah, there you go. But I have my gang of children now down running through the house. So, so anyway. Yeah, as as uh, as we mentioned in the first pub, the music that I'm playing, he's, he's looking at the songs like I'm playing the melodic tunes, I suppose. It's all dance music, it was all written for dances. I suppose some of you might have seen River Dance, probably all of you. Uh, hugely popular Irish dancing show. But when we talk about Irish dancing related to the music, it wasn't written for that style of dancing, that's called step dancing. It was written for set dancing, which is kind of an Irish version of line dancing, but it's done in couples, uh, all even numbers, so four people or six people or eight people will all dance together. So the music was kind of written for that, and as Anthony also mentioned earlier on, the dance could go on for 10 minutes or something. Most of our tunes are about 32 bars, so 16 bars repeated for the first part, 16 bars repeated for the second part. Most tunes are like that. There are some exceptions to that rule, there are five bar reels, 10 bar jigs, but for the vast majority of them, they're 32 bars repeated. And the reason why we play sets of tunes is because musicians would get very tired of playing 32 bars with that would be that But also when you change tune generally not always but generally you would change key. Are there any musicians in the house? So you'll understand that if, if you go from D major to G major there's a really noticeable boom change. You go from G major to A major, boom change. And that kind of lifts the dancers and you'll you get yup some hook you play around the around the floor, you know? And yeah, there are signs of appreciation. Very hard signs of appreciation. Okay, yeah, well done, that's excellent music. Uh, but yeah that's that's where that's where kind of why the music is as it is. It's played in sets of reels. If you go into a session there are there are no rules but you could have five people sitting around the table drinking a few pints, having a chat as Bruce said, there's no, one or two of them might be getting paid, but they're there because they want to be there, they're there because they want to have a jam session. And uh, you'll often see people leaning in and not playing along, it's not, the, the way the music is learned is all by ear. You, you very rarely would sit down with a manuscript in front of you and learn a tune by reading the notes. But if you did, there are obviously collections of tunes written and you, know, you can go online, there's lots of websites now, but if you were to play a tune, by sight reading it, it would sound something like this. So that's why a lot of people coming to Irish music from outside are kind of like, I know that's not on the page. But, but you're, you know, you're doing so much more than what's written in the notes. I've, I've taught people, I taught one girl from the, uh, she was Australian, and she played with the Sydney Philharmonic Orchestra. An amazing violinist, but she was in Ireland on tour and came back and loved it and moved here for a while. An amazing violinist and she was like, I've been trying to learn this music. She'd been to a couple of teachers, she went to Michelle, she went to all these great fiddle teachers. And uh, she, she thought there was something wrong with teachers or the way they were teaching, but the, the whole thing is that you just have to, it's all your interpretation of the tune. And the only way you get to have your own interpretation of the tune is by playing and playing and playing and listening to listen for a little bit. And that, that tune, Turns into So there's, there's little grace notes in there, there's, you're, you're using your bow to ornament the notes and make it sound pretty I suppose, but uh, everybody has their own, very, nobody really plays a tune the exact same. Chieftains might have played a tune <laughs> because the chieftains are bloody good. But uh, <laughs> is actually a rock. <laughs> but if you if you if you multi-tracked a session, if you recorded a session and broke it all down, you'll hear that they're all they're all playing the same notes, but the ornamentation and the little details they're, they're so intricate, they're all different. Everybody is doing their own thing. I'm playing counter melodies sometimes, I'm playing in fiddle, you will often hear fiddle players dropping an octave, I'm playing an octave below everybody else, and stuff like that. So it's all learned by ear and by listening to other people. So you'll often see people at sessions saying, I don't know that tune, or taking out their phone and recording it, and that's the way you pick up tunes. Somebody asked me, how many tunes would you say you know? Because the classical musicians, obviously, they, they read notes for all the, all the music they know. They said, how do you, how do you yeah. remember, <laughs> all, remember <laughs> all these tunes? How big is your repertoire? 
a colleague of ours actually does the book called Eamon Held Up and a thesis on it. He did a thesis on the kind of thought process behind how you learn all these tunes off by art. And he reckoned that most trad musicians, when, they're, when they hit about 30, like they know roughly about 500 tunes. 200 of which they can recall straight away. And the rest kind of, if somebody plays them, you're, you're like, oh, I know that. You know, you've heard it before, and you can, you can then recall it. You, you'll see them, you see musicians kind of picking their way through tuning sessions, and then two minutes later, they're playing it perfectly. Because at the end of the day, it is only 32 bars of music, so it's quite easy to pick up a melody. And once every tune is played, also, I forgot to mention, most tunes are played three or four times before you change to a different tune. So uh, that's how the music is learnt. Um, and it's, it's great. I suppose it, it stems back. Why it was learned by years? Because it was actually illegal to play Irish music for a long time under the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. <laughs> and if you were playing Irish music, you were hung from the nearest tree or till, until dead. Um, but a lot of our poetry, a lot of our stories, a lot of our music would have been burnt um, and, and just absolutely was not allowed at all. And that's why the tradition, a lot of our folklore was passed on by, by mouth and it still is. And the tunes and music and poetry are the same. And that's how they, they survive, I suppose. But um, what I've played so far, I've played a set of reels for you in Dogties. And uh, I played a set of jigs there while you were getting your drinks. The difference being two different dances. Reels are four, four times. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Jigs, six, eight times played. Slightly slower. One, two, three, four, four, six, one, two, three, four, four, six, one, two, three, four, four, six, one, two, three, four, four, six. The way, the way, uh, I heard Anthony saying this one, like the way to teach kids. I'm not terribly musical, so I didn't know the sheet music version of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you're teaching a child, you'd be like, what, 6, 8? So it's actually it's a fraction. You have a 6 and you have an 8. It's actually 8 beats in every bar, but you only play 6 of them in important parts. And he's like, whoa, it's very complicated. I said, no, it's easy. Just sing in your head. Rashes and sausages, rashes and sausages, rashes and sausages. <laughs> like a breakfast. The rashes, the spice and bacon, the sausages, unidentified bacon. <laughs> if you sing rushes and sausages, rushes and sausages, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. And a reel is very easy as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, black and decker, black and decker, black and decker. Or before power tools, gin and tonic, gin and tonic, gin and tonic. And this is for in your head. My own personal method. Preferred method for a real teaching is who's your daddy, who's your daddy, who's your daddy. <laughs> I don't teach children, by the way. Give me a chicken or a real. Will you? Uh, no, I just can't. The paper says no. <laughs> I could. I'll, I'll, I'll play a few tunes and see if you can tell up here. 